Hey there, for a while now, I have been getting lots and lots of comments, people asking me to make slow cooker recipes that don't require lots of cream cheese or cream of soups. So today I am going to be showing you six new dump and go slow cooker recipes that don't require any cream cheese or cream of soups. These recipes are still out of this world good. Let's go get started. I think this pork tenderloin with potatoes and carrots will really surprise you. To my slow cooker, I'm adding in one pre-seasoned package of pork tenderloin. This is a large one, and I just love these pre-seasoned packages. You could use any type of flavor you like. I use the applewood smoked bacon flavor. Then I added in about a pound and a half of little baby bite-sized potatoes. I just use the gemstone potatoes, but use any type of little potatoes you like. Now I'm adding in one bag of little baby carrots and then you're going to add your seasonings on top. I'm using a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of onion powder and garlic powder, but just go ahead and use any seasonings you like if you don't care for my particular seasonings. Now I'm placing about a fourth a cup of sliced butter all over the top. This cooked on low for seven to eight hours or until the pork tenderloin was nice and tender and the veggies were cooked through. I love cooking the pork and the potatoes in the slow cooker like this. It just gives the potatoes and the carrots so much great flavor. And then that pork is really nice and tender. It's also super juicy, not dry at all. And then I do want to mention the veggies are not mushy. I know sometimes with slow cooker recipes, the veggies do come out mushy, but definitely not here. And then here's my little kitchen helper, Macy. I can't believe she's going to be one next month. I love anything French onion, so now we're making this French onion chicken with rice. I'm starting out by slicing a yellow onion into kind of like discs like this. Over to my slow cooker that I do have sprayed with nonstick spray, I added in two large chicken breasts. Now I'm adding in the onion that we sliced along with about a cup and a half of uncooked jasmine or you could use white rice if you prefer. Then I'll add in a packet of Lipton onion soup mix followed by three cups of beef broth and a 10 ounce can of French onion soup. Give this a little stir. This will cook on low for about five hours. Once the cooking time is up, your chicken should be cooked through and the rice should be nice and tender. I'm just going to give this a good stir to kind of like shred up the chicken and stir together the rice. Now this is optional, but I am going to be adding some slices of provolone cheese on top. I just really like cheese. And then this is also optional, but I am going to be sprinkling some of these crispy fried onions on top of the cheese. I covered this with the lid and this cooked on low for about 10 minutes to melt down the cheese and I served it up. If you're a big French onion fan like I am, you will absolutely devour this dinner. I had seconds and thirds of this. It really is that good. I can make this over and over again. My little family just won't get tired of it. It really is pretty scrumptious. You are going to love these Italian chicken sliders. I serve them alongside the easiest couscous recipe in the world. It's so good, but we're starting on the chicken sliders first. To this bowl, I added in a half a cup of Italian dressing, two tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I gave this a really good whisk. This is kind of like the Italian sauce. Over to my slow cooker, I'm spraying it with nonstick spray, then I'm adding adding in two large chicken breasts. Over the chicken breast, I'm adding one drained can of petite diced tomatoes. Then I'll add the Italian sauce over that. This cooked on low for about five hours. While this was cooking away, I did start on the couscous recipe. I don't want you to miss out on this recipe. It's just amazing. To the pan on my stove, I added two tablespoons of olive oil along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave this a stir until the garlic was 
was fragrant. Now I'm adding in one cup of pearl couscous. It kind of looks like this. I just get it from Walmart, you know, nothing too fancy. Now I'm going to give this a really good stir and let the couscous cook for about a minute or two. Then I added in two cups of chicken broth along with a dash of pepper and salt. Then the juice from one lemon. I am going to give this a stir and let this simmer covered for about 15 minutes. Now that the simmering time is up, I'm going to stir in about a third a cup of Parmesan cheese, let the cheese melt down, and then that is all you have to do for this couscous recipe. It tastes like a million dollars, but it truly is that easy. But now that my chicken is finished cooking in the slow cooker, I'm starting on my rolls. So I'm just using kind of like brioche buns for the rolls, but you could use any type of slider rolls you like, or like dinner rolls, anything, but I placed them on my sheet pan then place some mozzarella cheese on the inside. I'm going to put this under the broiler for a couple of minutes to melt down the cheese. While that's in the oven I am shredding up my chicken. I'm shredding mine with my electric hand mixer just because it's easy like that but you could shred your chicken with two forks or a meat masher. Here are the rolls out of the oven. I'm just going to place that chicken on the inside and then that's all you have to do. I really enjoy making my family these Italian chicken sliders just because they really are that easy to throw together. They come together with very minimal effort and if you don't typically cook with couscous or you haven't made it in a while, I definitely suggest you making this recipe. Now we're making these garlic beef bites with potatoes. We're going to start this recipe out by cutting one yellow onion into larger chunks. I'll set this to the side. Now I have about nine small to medium sized russet potatoes. I'm cutting my potatoes into kind of like bite sized pieces. Now over to my slow cooker, I'm going to add in two pounds of beef stew meat, followed by the onion that we just cut up. Next, you're going to add in a packet of beefy onion soup mix and then add in three-fourths cup of beef broth and then your seasonings a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper a tablespoon of minced garlic a half a teaspoon of onion powder garlic powder and oregano go ahead and give this a little stir after you're through stirring this up add the potatoes that we cut up earlier in and then after you add those potatoes in give this another stir to kind of like coat the potatoes put the lid on top and cook this on low for about seven hours. Once this is finished cooking, all you have to do is serve it up. This is really, truly good, but if you wanna make this extra, extra good, you could sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese at the end. I did also serve this with steamed broccoli. Now we're making this garlic butter chicken to begin. I have about nine small to medium sized russet potatoes right here. I'm going to cut them into bite sized pieces. I brought them over to my slow cooker and I added the potatoes right in there. Now I'm adding in two tablespoons of minced garlic along with some of our seasonings, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, Italian seasoning, and then a dash of salt and pepper. I'll give this a Stir to kind of coat the potatoes in the seasonings. Now over the top of the potatoes, we're going to be adding about a pound and a half of chicken thighs. This is just boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And then over the chicken thighs, you do want to season them with some more seasonings. I just used the same seasonings just on top. I did a little bit more onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, Italian seasoning, and then salt and pepper. Over the top of the chicken, we're going to be adding some slices of butter. Add about a fourth a cup of butter that you just thinly sliced. Cook this on low for about six hours. This is a really super great hearty meal. This is also a great meal if you're on a budget and don't really have a lot of ingredients on hand at your house. It's very affordable and super good. 
Now we're making this lasagna sausage tortellini, and if you wanted to make this meatless, you certainly can. Just don't add the sausage in. But to the pan on my stove, I added a pound of sausage along with one yellow onion that I diced. I broke the sausage up, and I'm going to cook it through. While it's cooking away, I am going to start on the cheese mixture. So to this bowl, I added about 24 ounces of cottage cheese, a cup of mozzarella cheese, half a cup of Parmesan cheese, and a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave this a stir and then this is just your cheese mixture. Back over to the sausage on the stove. I'm just removing any excess grease from my pan right now. Then you're going to add in two 24 ounce jars of marinara sauce. You could use any type or any brand of marinara sauce you like. Then give this a good stir. We're going to start layering up our lasagna now. So over to my large slow cooker, I'm spraying it with nonstick spray. We're doing a total of three layers. So the first layer is the meat sauce layer. And then I have a 36 ounce bag of frozen cheese tortellini. So just kind of add just part of that bag in and then add a layer of the cheesy mixture and then repeat it over and over again. I topped this with a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. This cooked on low for about six to seven hours. Typically, I'm not a huge fan of like knockoff lasagnas just because I love real lasagna so much, but this is so, so good. And then you can make it your own by using different meats. You could add vegetables to this, or if you wanted to, you could substitute the cottage cheese out for a ricotta. I have so many more slow cooker videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. I'll see you there. Bye for now.